Hello, my name is Dan Armstrong. I'm an Adobe Education Leader, and it's my opportunity to take you through some of the filters that are new to Adobe Photoshop CS6. Uh, I'm going to take a look at a couple pictures that you might use in a classroom setting, and hopefully this will be beneficial to you to teach to your students um, and help them out with some of their images. So, first things first, I'm just going to do a file open, and I'm going to choose this picture that we need to fix. Uh, one of my video students was out filming some things and they snapped this picture uh, while they were filming with uh, the GoPro. And the GoPro has a very large fisheye lens on it. And so it gives us some of this curvature of the walls and some of the beams up here and this basketball support beam and the curves on the line. So we're going to use uh, one of the new filters available in Photoshop CS6 to solve our problem. So first thing I'm going to do though is I am going to turn this layer into a smart object. That's going to allow me to come back and adjust the wide angle uh, as a smart filter later. So in the filter menu we have this new filter called the adaptive wide angle filter and it'll open up a dialog box that looks something like this. So we have over here on the far uh, right side we have kind of our zoomed in view of where we're actually pointing at um, and here in the middle we can see already that this filter has cleaned up a lot of the warping that was happening on the edge so over here for the correction I have it set to a fisheye um, and there's some other options here for scale we want to make a little bigger smaller focal length so what we're gonna do though is this is a really nice tool so what we know is this baseline here should be straight and right now it is curved so I'm just going to simply click and then I'm going to move my mouse along this line here out to about where it belongs and we can see in the preview get it pretty close there it's already zoomed in for me um, and then we're just going to move this one anchor point kind of out to the line there and what that's going to do now is that's going to straighten out our line uh, we got some curvature down here from just not having enough pixels but we're going to have to deal with that in a minute. So down here then on the same thing on the side wall, I'm just going to click and drag this kind of up here to this top corner. We know that that should all be pretty straight and we can move again that anchor point in the middle uh, to kind of make this work out a little bit better for us. So there we go. So that's looking pretty straight there now. We can do the same things up here uh, really any place that we know is supposed to be straight we can drag these lines across it um, like these beams and the rafters and that's going to help straighten out our image a little bit and it's going to warp the sides of this um, as we go through but in the end we should end up with a pretty straight output again I'm using my viewer here on the right to make sure that we get this uh, looking correctly so now I've already I've cleaned up quite a bit of this middle part that we could actually use um, over here on this edge I'm gonna click and pull this across the top of these bleachers as well uh, just to try to clean that up a little more and uh, we could do some more to this too if we wanted um, to try to clean this up but we could add as many of these lines we needed to and as we go through we may need to come back and uh, adjust these just a tiny bit just to get it really good so relatively quickly now we've got a picture here that is looking much better than it did. Uh, we might need to pull this side back in here a little bit. There we go. And so we can go ahead and use this uh, image now. And then we could, what we'll have to do with this obviously is now we've got to go pull our crop tool out and uh, cut off some of this extra data in here. Uh, and the crop tool has been redesigned in, Illish, in uh, Photoshop CS6 here and gives us a lot of nice new features including this shaded area it kind of shows me where I'm at so we could come in here and tell it uh, right now I got a 5 by 7 we have some options in here for common sizes uh, that you might use um, and then also what I can do is we have this uh, straighten tool available to us now so I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna drag that right across the top of these bleachers um, and so if I just click and drag that across, what it'll do is it'll uh, straighten it up and kind of shift that and rotate it a little bit for me. 
uh, with my crop tool. So now I'm just going to hit return on my keyboard and it's going to render this smart filter for a minute and there we go. Now we have a little bit of a nicer picture that we could use uh, that encompasses the whole gymnasium and we got rid of a lot of the fisheye. So I notice that it is available here in my layers panel. Uh, if I double click the wide angle it will take me back and I can come out here and adjust that again. So kind of a nice thing to do converting that into a smart object to give you your filter later. Uh, and you can turn that off to see the original, how it's kind of bloated, and then turn it back on to see our corrections. So you can see these rafters are a little curved. We might have wanted to do a little bit more uh, with those. But this image is now pretty good and it could be used, you know, for just about anything. And again, there's the previous fisheye that's curved out on the edges. And then there's your adaptive uh, wide angle filter. So kind of a nice little filter. Okay, the next couple we're going to look at are just some neat features uh, that just kind of fun for prettying up our pictures a little bit here. Uh, I'm going to go back out and grab another picture. This is a picture that I took um, of a lighthouse when we were out in Washington uh, on a recent family trip. So um, one of the things that's kind of nice that photographers have used for a while is a nice uh, blur on the edges of this to kind of, you know, give it a little more focal and whatnot. So my goal here is to show you some of the controls with the uh, new filter. So in the filter menu, uh, we're going to go down here to the blur menu, and we now have this uh, iris blur uh, that's available to us. And so this iris will kind of cast this circle for us, and now we got these blur edges out here. So I'm going to just um, adjust this oval here a little bit. And notice the heads-up display. This is a new thing, again, to uh, Photoshop CS6. So it's really cleaned up our panels. The only things we need are out here. Everything else has kind of been put away. So inside here, I can pull these inner blurs, and it'll kind of push that blur closer to the edge. And if I wanted it to come out just a little bit more, I kind of bloat that oval. And... Uh, bring this top up just a little more at the top of that lighthouse is getting just a little fuzzy okay and then down here we could uh, change the blur amount the intensity of the blur again all the tools really heads up and in a few seconds here uh, we've cleaned this up and made it look uh, pretty good and we can do some really nice things with that so uh, the new blur gallery. We've got some other sliders, options, things here uh, for you as well. So uh, we're going to call that OK. And then it'll add that blur and commit the changes uh, to our image and kind of make that look a little nicer. So, um, OK, one last picture. This is a really fun one, and uh, your students will enjoy this. It's a fun project uh, with the tilt shift. So what we do with tilt shift is the idea behind this is we're going to try to make this image uh, of this you know boathouse here that's a little bit older. We're going to make this look uh, a little bit miniature. You know, having them take a picture and then turning it into a little bit of a miniature uh, is a pretty nice little project thing they can work on here and practice with this tilt shift filter. So I'm going to go back into my filter gallery and I'm going to go into the blur and I'm going to grab the new tilt shift blur and so what this is going to do is this is going to give me um, some options here on my tilt shift where I can kind of move this blur up a little bit and the idea here is we're just trying to blur out just some of the details uh, to make this look just a little bit more miniature here. We'll get that straight again. And so by blurring out kind of the top and the back and focusing it in on the center, uh, relatively quickly this will um, pull this little dock in here and make it look like a nice little miniature uh, display, if you will, something you might see like on a model train set or something. So kind of a fun project here. Uh, it requires a little bit of practice with the right kind of picture and stuff to make that look right. We'll pull this blur down just a little bit more. So, okay. And then uh, we'll say okay to that. 
and let's kind of make it, you know, run our filter and make it look a little bit more miniature or, you know, than we might have had in the past. So the uh, tilt shift we just took a look at and we looked at the iris blur and also the adaptive wide angle. So all three of these could be put together in a really nice lesson um, about the blur tools, the filters uh, in Photoshop CS6. So if you have some advanced students that are already pretty familiar with CS5 and you're just trying to teach them some of the new things in CS6, or if you have some beginning students and you just want to introduce them to something fun and creative to get them kind of hooked on your class, uh, any of these things uh, can be put together into a nice, neat little project. So uh, those are some of the new filters in Photoshop CS6. And again, my name is Dan Armstrong. I'm Adobe Education Leader. And you can get in touch with me uh, through the Adobe Education Exchange or at darmstrong at cdaschools.org. Thank you for your time.